Um, from there, his anger went towards his his job. He had a you know great job and a, you know amazing company, and you know, he was he was doing well, but not as well as he should have been. And there were some issues. And he told me one day, I accidentally quit my job. I hit send on an email what? that I. What? Yeah, I hit send on an email I wasn't going to send just... impulsively, and I quit my job. Okay. And we just moved into a new house, and we had two kids, and he accidentally quit his job is when I knew that like, he was I having – I accidentally have another baby. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I accidentally have children, <laughs> you know, and a mortgage and car notes. I accidentally have a dollar. And need food <laughs> for these children. And eat. <laughs> <laughs> I need to have a roof. So I, I wasn't – worried i i left him in control of all of all of the money all of everything okay. i was just so naive i didn't know how much money he made i didn't see the taxes i didn't deal with anything because you know he's an mba he's got this mm -hmm. i don't need to look at we anything trusted him. i trusted him with every fiber of my being so you know i i was working only part time cuz i just you know had a baby and um, was trying to, you know, respect, give him the respect that he needed. You know, he was supposed to look for a job. And um, it got to the point where, you know, this is in the middle of like the big housing crisis in, in 2008. It was just mm -hmm. a, a mess. Yes, it was. It was a mess. And he wasn't working. And I was trying to work and I was trying to make him happy and trying to deal with the kids. And then I realized... I was losing my mind. You know, I was drinking heavily just to maintain this space for him. I was making myself very small so he could be very as big and, you know, angry as he needed to be. Mm -hmm. It didn't occur to me. There were a couple of things that happened. Um, a, you know, of course, Hurricane Katrina happened that time. And one of my very best friends lives in New Orleans. Her family was displaced. They oh. came to California because they had extended family here. So they were going to be here. Mm -hmm. And she just needed some space because until all the family members were placed, they were in a two bedroom suite at some, you know, and it was like 10 of them. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, I said to her, just come and stay with us until they find your placement. And she said one night, I just need to get out. I need to walk. I need to like, look, let's go to the mall. Can we just go to the mall? And of course, James was home. The kids were, were sitting there playing and I said, like, you know, can I go to the mall with, you know, mm -hmm. with Dre because, you know, she needs to get out because she needs to go get out of the house. And he said, you're going to have me babysit. I'm watching the game. And I was like, it's just for a minute. Can I just do that for a minute? We went round and round in circles. She finally had to interject and say, like, hey, I need this. You'll be fine. We're going to go. So we get to the mall. We were about to get out of the car. And she said, I just want to say to you, I, did you realize that you asked permission to leave the house? Mm -hmm. She's like, are you okay? Because you just asked permission to leave your house. That's a problem. She, she was like, I don't know what's going on, but you need to open your eyes and pay attention. This is, that wasn't okay. That what happened is not okay. Mm hmm so from that point, I started to really, really pay attention to how he was treating myself and my children. And then um, one of our children said to me, Mommy, you don't smile anymore. You're not mm -hmm. happy anymore. Are you going to be, what's wrong, Mommy? Are you going to be okay? And that's when I realized I needed to do something different. Um, I really was open and I, then I, decided to start working full time uh, to, you know, be a little less available for him. During that time, he comes to me and says, we have $150. And I say, okay. In cash? Like where? What? <laughs> In my wallet? $150 <laughs> for the week, $150 yeah. for the month. Today? <laughs> $150. What do you mean? He said, that's it. We don't have anything. I need you to sign what? over my re your retirement fund so I can use it to pay the house note and the car note. I was stunned. Okay. I was stunned. 
but I did it. Uh, I I gave it to him. Okay. First, I asked him. I said, "Where's yours?" He said, "I've already gone through it." Okay. So I signed it over to him, and um, then I realized I need to get into his shit <laughs> uh, with a fine tooth. Oh. Let me get into his shit because I've been running around here thinking that everything's okay and it's not okay. Um, that's when I found out he had drained the kids 529s. No. Um, his retirement, my retirement, there was a little bit of money that his mom left in life insurance that was gone to, no. um, the houses had been refinanced and it was upside down and we were behind two, two car payments going into the third car payment. And, you know, I was just oblivious. I was just raising the kids, going to work and not paying attention to anything else. Cause I just well, cause trusted yeah. with my whole being. I trust him with everything. And, um, it just, I said to him, let me just rewind for a second. I had always said everyone when they get married makes, says vows or writes their own vows or they have their own things that they promise each other that they won't do mm -hmm. in a marriage. And one of the things I asked them to never do is put me in a financial position where I had to ask my parents for money. Yeah. My parents are not the best. They are not generous people. They have it, but they're not generous. They will make you remember every second if you have to borrow money. So I said to him right then and there, call, call your in-laws. Mm -hmm. Tell them what's happening. And they cut a check for us immediately and told him, do not let the car or the houses go. Whatever you do, whatever money you have, put it towards that. And then, you know, we can help you with whatever else. But he didn't listen to that at all. Um, about a, a month after that, I get woken up in the middle of the night. Um, the car alarm is going off. Huh. The car is being repoed. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And I wake up. I think the car is being stolen. Yes. Because I had already asked him, did you make the... I, this is my first time ever asking him if the bills are paid because I had never done that before. And at this point, we've been together uh, eight years. I'd never asked him that before. Everything was always taken care of. I'd give him money. He, We had our joint. I never, ever thought about it. So I think somebody's stealing the car. Yeah. So I jump up. I go out there. And then I see that it's a tow truck and... I step outside and the guy says, I'm, I'm ma'am, I'm uh, repossessing the car for, um, for the car company. And my heart just drops at, and it's in the middle of the night. And I said, sir, I'll give you the keys of the car. If you will let me get my kids car seats and diaper bag out of the car. And he said, sure, ma'am, you can do that. Now, mind you, James never even came out of the house. Huh. And I think he just, he knew because at that point, the flame in me is starting at my feet. Where <laughs> starting was to he? burn. He was just in the house. He just, I don't know where he was in the house. He just was in the house. Okay. So I get the car seats out and give the guy the keys and I walk in the house. It's dead quiet because the kids are asleep and I just cussed him out that night I think at that point is when I realized like we are not on the same team we are not on the same team anymore you are not being honest with me you are not expressing yourself we could sell everything in here and move into apartment like just so we don't have the stress he was like, I'm going to get it together. He swore to me on his mother that he was going to get it together. He was going to do this, he was going to do that. Mm -hmm. And I really didn't see any progress. I started to call in favors. I called a, a friend of mine, her father, who's a 
you know, a very influential man sits on the board of several large companies. Mm -hmm. And he said, I will help you. I will help him. He gave him, he said, call or look at these companies, see if they have any openings. I will walk your resume in to HR and say, interview this, this guy. Mm -hmm. He never, ever took advantage of mm. that. I called in another favor with a friend who said, Hey, I could get him a job with this, you know, radio station. He'd come in at entry level, but once they find out the education that he has and that he has experience, he'll probably move up because it's a very large company and they have stuff happening and all around. There's a lot of growth potential. There's a lot of growth potential. Nothing. Okay. You know, slowly like things are falling apart in the house. Like I'm you know, just noticing he's not really making an effort as I take on a second job. Mm. I take on a second job and I've got the two kids. And even at this point, I was really disappointed because I was not only doing the job of being at home, you know, keeping things together, washing the clothes, going to the grocery store, the same things that I was doing when I only had the part-time job. And now he is currently not working and he is not willing to contribute being at home all the time. He's still expecting me to do everything that I was doing plus earning more money mm -hmm. and doing that. Um, so I started to get mad resentful, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm getting mad resentful when like I come home and everything's a mess. Now, granted, I'm not going to say that everything was perfect when he used to come home. But, you know, then again, I, I was young. Yeah. I was learning how to organize. Babies. Well, yeah, and I have babies. Little, and they're then, toddlers. And, and, and you know, yeah. and everyone knows that sometimes you just have to let shit go when yep. you have to toddlers and just play with them. Yeah. Hang out with them. Yeah. Sit on the floor and let them feed you soggy Cheerios. <laughs> Whatever. You know, fuck this laundry right now. This baby <laughs> wants to play. Yeah. You know? Priorities. Man. I know. Yeah. Come on. And I, at first I didn't, but at, when it was like, well, you didn't go to the grocery store. Wait a minute. I just, you know, took on a freelance gig. This was before Amazon Fresh. <laughs> yes. This is when there was or no Instacart. such thing as delivery <laughs> or online anything. Unless it was for pizza. <laughs> There was no online ordering for pizza. Not online ordering, but calling it in. Yeah, calling you could it call in. it in. There yeah. was maybe, it was just pizza and Domino's that delivered. Nobody else did. Yeah, no, Chinese food didn't, did they? Some, only a few places. The one place yeah. in the area that we lived. So, yeah, yeah not all, not all the convenient, yeah, not yeah. all the conveniences that you have now where you can like have a baby on your hip yeah. and order your groceries from Whole Foods. Yeah. Like th that wasn't an, an option. Um, so... I, I had been, you know, I mean, just working and working and working. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, every opportunity that he had to, um, try to get us out of this hole, he would just kind of squander it. And he was still angry mm -hmm. and mean mm -hmm. and, you know, felt that he was babysitting his own children. And, um, I, I, started thinking I don't want to do this I don't I don't want to be in this relationship anymore um he decided to try to sell life insurance and I thought you don't have that kind of luxury you have there is no there's no nest egg for you to like build a business mm -hmm. you've got to just do a job and so when he turned down the the job at the radio station because he said um fifty thousand dollars isn't enough money and i said well it's better than zero mm -hmm. and he just flat out refused to take the job i was like well how do i even make you happy how do i what do i do um it just seemed like he did not want to get us out of the mess i he took on to put it in a box and keep it in the box i right yeah. i i took on a third job at oh, this point okay so I took on a third job and at this point I, I, I had decided I, I, I can't do this anymore. The pressure was just too much. The, the resentment from him and the obligation from him and the, and the control and the, the disrespect, it just never stopped. And I, I just didn't, 
I felt like if I didn't separate myself from from him, I would just end up drowning. Yeah. You know, because I couldn't even give my kids the kind of attention that they needed. And they were a little apprehensive and nervous around him because he was he would get angry for no reason. No reason. Um with uh, especially with our with our you know, our son when he was, you know, six, seven. And um, I think it was just a couple days before Valentine's Day, I decided I'm not going to pretend that I'm happy and in love and and try to, you know, do some, you know, dinner and, you know, whatever mm -hmm. afterwards. I don't I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. 